Uh, hi, we're Dawn and James. Sorry, no, scratch that. We're James and Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, hi, we're James and Dawn. Uh, welcome to our van. This is a 2014 long wheelbase sprinter uh, that we have self-converted ourselves into our full-time van. I'm Nate Murphy and I have literally just bought this van to show you how to build a van. We have made a really detailed course which will help you go from this to this. You will learn everything you need. We help you specify your electrical system and you'll be able to access the community all building their own vans at the same time. This is our van, come on in. Hi guys, come on in. So welcome to our home. It's quite a big open layout. And then we've got a closed off bedroom because, uh, you know, just in case we wanted to get away from each other, we wanted to be able to get away. Um, but basically we designed it so that we've got a six foot couch here that pulls out into another separate double bed. And as you can see, it's kind of like a nice sociable space. Loveliest thing about the van, in my opinion, is my kitchen. Um, so we have an induction cooktop um, and also an electric oven. Um, because I do cook a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, and I eat a lot of food, so, yeah. so it's important. Uh, so, yeah, so we've got a solid um, walnut counter and we've got touch sensors on the lights and then my favourite piece is my Belfast sink. Belfast sink. Which I know is a bit silly, it's heavy, but I really wanted it. <laughs> Completely unnecessary, but yeah. it looks really nice. Yeah. Um, and we have a separate drinking water filter, which is UVA. Is it UVA? Yeah. Uh, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Yeah. Um, and then all of my spices, etc., are in there. Big fridge. And yeah, it's just a really nice social space that we've got. Um, and I think that was pretty important to us because we are here full time. Another thing that was pretty important to us was to have uh, our own shower internally. Um, so we do have an external shower as well and we've just redone this because the one we originally did wasn't actually that waterproof so we've just retanked this. James wanted um, a waterfall shower head so got that in case we do, are actually near water but we've got obviously one that conserves water there and we've got Simplu, so a composting toilet and it's a pretty good space actually because when we're not using it we get to put our laundry in and yeah, that's good. And we've got a um, self-cleaning door thing. Another good thing is we have a full length mirror, which I think is a bit of a luxury. It's, it's a plastic mirror, but um, it still does the job. And then, yeah, we've got a king size bed at the back, which we've done sideways along, which I think is, is quite a good thing because we get that extra foot of space um, in the living area. And we've made, managed to be able to do it because of the, the side pods uh, that we've added in. So they're basically fiberglass uh, side pods. And James basically was complaining that he didn't have enough space. So um, he gets an extra eight inches now. So with the induction hub, it's a two ring uh, burner. Um, it's pretty, it's like I can boil a kettle on here pretty much just as fast if not faster than a gas one. So it was really important to us initially when we were looking at it to make sure that we don't use any gas or LPG in the van. Um, so this was really a, a quite a high criteria for us. Um, I don't tend to use both at the same time, only because James shouts at me. Um, but even using the smaller one is awesome. But if I'm doing something that's kind of complex, I'll use both. So another reason why we wanted the uh, hob here is because we've got two uh, Max Air fans. So it works as like a circulation of um, basically having cool air in the van, but also as an extractor fan for any cooking that I do, um, if obviously the door's closed. Um, but watch your fingers. Um, we have just this bit here as well, which James likes to use a lot. And then he hits himself in the head uh, when we're using it, but it's long enough so we can still get in and out. Um, but also adds the extra foot of counter It's about eight foot, yeah. And another thing that we did 
because obviously we've got a big couch is we have our <laughs> we have our projector which is really good we've used this a couple of times now and uh, it is just like any other home that we've ever had with a big couch we, we actually use this couch more as a lazy cinema oh, evening night. yeah as a date night um but yeah it's really good and we do have these swivel chairs i do a lot of work from from here um and all of our clothes are in these deep um couch drawers uh, we've put in the the what's this called uh, overhead overhead shelf yeah. yeah so we we basically did this ourselves and we've carpeted it in one go so it's kind of seamless and it looks quite nice and over there is mary um and uh yeah she tends to just come with us wherever we go there we go both of these are turn around we tend to use this one more often than not unless we've got a lot of people in the van like we did last night so both of them turn around and it creates like really nice social space um that we can kind of chat to like we can put another chair there as well i think it's important because obviously i know sometimes people um, will box off the cab um, but it was important for us as well from a security point of view that one it's an open space that we can like entertain but also if we ever need to drive off for, yeah. for any reason we can just get straight into the as i mentioned we have uh, an electric oven the instructions for this oven said that we needed to leave about a foot of space above it when it's in use obviously in a van you can't just leave a foot of air <laughs> without a use so we actually put it on these sliders so when it's being used we bring it out um and yeah it creates obviously the the space and it allows the back to be able to not get too hot um it's not that annoying people think it's annoying but it's really not we just slide it in if we want to get past um but it's been fantastic we use the grill the oven all the time yeah and it's not a microwave it's not like a those electric microwaves that you get it's, it doesn't have that feature but for me it's even better than the gas oven to be honest so i really i really like cooking on it mm -hmm. so this is probably one of our favorite spots Usually James and I fight over this spot um, because, oh, sorry, baby girl, uh, because when we're somewhere really beautiful and we've got a lot of work to do, this is probably probably the prime spot. Uh, so as I introduced Mary, she is a bit of a rascal and um, we obviously, when we're in somewhere hot, we do like to leave the door open, but Madam likes to make a run for it. So we, we installed this it is a child lock really but yeah. it's uh it's been really useful so it just hooks in and then it's got a lock here so even if she rests her, her whole body against it it won't let her out um and she has tried so many times to get out on you mary but you're not you can't can you no <laughs> So this is the outside of the van. This is my baby. So inside was Dawn and outside was, was myself. So the first thing is we tried to find a four wheel drive sprinter, but I think that's mainly something in the States. So unfortunately we couldn't find one. So in that, in case, in that case, we then decided we'd do the next best thing. So we've actually raised the van by 50 millimeters. So you can see there is a little bit of aluminium that's lifted the van up at all points around the van. Uh, and then we put these uh, awesome uh, Maxxis all-terrain tyres on. So by hopefully doing those two things, we've given ourselves the, at least the perception that we're a four-wheel drive Mercedes, even if maybe we're not. Uh, but though they've been really good so far and the extra clearance has definitely helped because as we all know, the great park-ups are never on nice, even roads. So uh, yeah, that's the, the tyres and the suspension. Um, now I am, I'm a bit of a security nerd and I wanted to make sure that the van was protected at all times. So some of the things that we've put on the van is uh, deadlocks on the cab doors. Um, we've also uh, put these amazing, uh, what they call hear locks. So what happens is these secure uh, to the uh, A pillar. 
So even if someone was to um, try and pop the lock, and if we've locked the door, it literally the door won't open. Um, another thing is that we've got updated uh, security locks. So we use uh, my little RFD tag. Uh, we put that on the door and that will electronically uh, open the door. And it's the same principle again. Um, Uh, it's the same principle again, it just means again, if someone was to drill through the locks, the door uh, won't open. Um, you might think I'd stop there, I didn't. Uh, we've actually got uh, security cameras, 360 around the van, and we've actually got them colour coded. Um, so we can check on those through an app on our phone. Uh, and also when we're driving, we can see where we're going left and right um, at all times just to make sure again that we're oh, oh, not that uh yeah it was just again if because sometimes we will leave mary in the van if we need to go somewhere quickly um, but because we've got the cameras we can always keep an eye on her as well if we're moving around to the front um another thing that we've done is we've put light bars uh just above the license plate here so these are 12 volt light bars uh, and also one on the top of the cab there and if you really look hard, you can see the security camera there. Looks like something out of Cyclops, out of like the X-Men or something like that, which is pretty cool. So as we move around the van, um, we have done some other bits. Uh, one of them is this uh, very shiny looking uh, pedal box. So this will go over the pedals. So even when we leave the van, we just put this over the pedals. And again, if someone was to break in, they, they wouldn't be able to drive the van away. Our main thought was, because obviously we have windows, if someone really wants to get into our van, they can. Um, but our biggest asset is, is the van. So we're just trying to make sure no one can drive off of it. Um, and then the last few things that we've done is we've got an additional and a mobilizer on the van. We have to try, type a secret code in. I would tell you the code, but then it wouldn't be very secret. Uh, and we've got a, uh, like a GPS tracker, which again, we can look at our phone. So we know where the van is at all times, which is pretty nifty. I was a bit scared of gas. I don't know why, it's probably completely safe. Uh, but we then made the decision to go all electric. So we have no gas, no LPG in the van. Um, it was very important that we were very, what, environmentally friendly, shall we say? Off grid, we wanted to be off grid for as long as we needed to, obviously. I appreciate you, we still need to you know, get water and stuff like that, but we wanted to basically generate our own uh, electricity. Got big, big batteries. Yeah, so we had to get big, very big uh, lithium uh, batteries just to kind of cope with all the demands. Obviously when you're home, you press a switch and you don't think about it. But uh, on this journey, we've definitely had to uh, take that into consideration, yeah. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so when we uh, come round to the back of the van, uh, we've got this cool uh, wheel carrier. Um, we have actually already used this because we have had some punctures already, haven't we? Not with these tires. Not with these tires, but on our trip to the Arctic, um, we managed to get a puncture. Um, and then, again, you can see the uh, camera there. Uh, and both on the back door and the rear door, we've got these really cool uh, security lights that will come on and that's activated by a uh, switch in the van. Um, I know Dawn has mentioned it, um, this caused some issues because in initially we hadn't planned to put these on uh, but once we lived, started to live in the van full time it, it started to cause a few issues uh, and our, our marriage was at risk. Uh, so we bought these pods, these are fiberglass pods that we've uh, glued onto the van and then riveted on uh, and they'll give you about roughly about four inches either side so you get eight inches in total and effectively your head and your feet will kind of sit in these pods on the side. So this initially used to be a delivery van obviously I won't say who um, and it had their massive name along the side which wasn't very attractive so we got the van completely resprayed. Very rusted. Very rusted yeah and uh, I think it had hit a telephone pole or something. 
So it had a few knocks and, and dents in it, but yeah, we've got it uh, sprayed and we, we love the colour. So one of the things that we've also done is got these really cool um, uh, curtains or blinds. Uh, we got them from a company called Ridgeline. So what it allows you to do is to block out any like mosquitoes or any bugs that you don't want getting into your van. So we've got one on the back door uh, and one on the rear door. And they've actually got these uh, fly nets. So you can kind of open up different parts depending on what you want open and what you don't want open. Um, and for example, you can bring them up to say halfway. So if you want to kind of block out the the bedroom but you want the garage open you can kind of roll them up like that so you can kind of block out different things as and when you need to so they're really cool and also because it's in the bedroom it's effectively like a blackout curtain so you can obviously sleep a little bit better and you don't get any light or any noise coming through so it's pretty cool um, I know we talked about the uh, electric system so on the roof we have three 175 watt flexible panels. So we have a total of 525 watts of solar on the roof. And then we have 800 amp hours of lithium Life PA4 batteries. Because so we don't have any gas or uh, LPG, so we need to make sure that we could uh, power all of our electrical uh, gizmos. Yeah, so we got these batteries from a UK uh, manufacturer called Beyond Batteries. Really, really, really good brand. Uh, they've got Bluetooth, so we can check them on our phones. Uh, they've been absolutely fantastic. They've been really good so far on our trips because so we've gone to the Arctic. We've used them pretty much 24/7. They've managed all of the, you know, very cold temperatures, and they've been they've been they've been brilliant. Yeah, so we'd highly recommend them. So for the Arctic conditions and just in general, the whole van has been insulated with uh, Salatex PRR board and also um, uh, sheet wool goes in the different you know, pockets and corners. Uh, and then we've obviously vapor barred it and used Reflectix. Uh, in the Arctic, it was absolutely perfect. We were nice and warm in the van and we've just come back from Europe where the pe uh, temperatures have been like 40 degrees and the van has been super cool. So it's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the, the in we probably went a bit OTT with the insulation, but actually, We've kind of done both ends of the spectrum and it's been really, yeah, it's been really good so far. Uh, this is my man cave. Dawn is not allowed in here whatsoever. Um, so we built the bed out of aluminium uh, briefly. So it's riveted in either side and then these 40 by 40 profiles go across to create our bed frame. Uh, super solid, uh, obviously isn't going to kind of um, warp or you know, anything like that. Um, and it's been really, really good so far. Doesn't add too much weight to the van, um, but it's been pretty, yeah, pretty good. We've had no issues or problems with it so far. Um, the reason why we also went with aluminium is we wanted to raise certain parts of the garage. So all of our electrics is on the left-hand side. Uh, all of our water, like our water heater and all of our pipe work is on that side. Um, yeah and our fresh water tank is inside the van because we knew that we might be going to colder climates and we didn't want it to freeze so we have 140 um, 140 liters about 40 gallons of water um, to make sure that we can have a have a good old shower so sometimes we don't want to have a shower indoors so we've actually put in this external shower system so all it is, is you just flick that open. It's already pressurized. You stick this in, you kind of turn it on and without soaking anyone, it should work like that, see? Very good pressure. I know it's got this as well. So if that kind of goes like, like that. Oh, no. You need to lick the other side of it. It should be like, yeah. And then if you stick that in there, you've got your nice little outdoor shower. Kind of, yeah. So the van overall probably took us about six or seven months. Um, in hindsight, we could probably do it a bit quicker, but we're 
both self-taught, you know, we've watched all the good YouTube channels. Um, but what I would say is if we can do it, um, anyone can. And we've had a great time doing it and uh, maybe if we were doing it full time, it might have been a bit quicker, but yeah, we, we had a great time, didn't we? Uh, had a great time. Yeah, so uh, we've just come back from going to the Arctic Circle. So we drove all the way from the UK all the way up to the highest point in Norway, uh, in a place called the Nordcam, is it? Yeah. Uh, to see the Northern Lights. We did get to see them, what, five, four, four, four times? Four times. Yeah. Um, it was a uh, great experience, but uh, thinking about it, we were very, very unprepared. Uh, no, we were prepared, we were we just, prepared. things just went wrong. Yes, yeah, a lot of things went wrong, um, including our handbrake breaking and our heater. And diesel went that broke and then broke. we got COVID. And then we got COVID, but it was such a great experience, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It is, it's probably... I won't go again, so no. that's fine. Dawn's now, <laughs> Dawn's now banned any cold countries. We can only go to warm ones. Yeah. I think if we were to go to the Arctic again, yeah. we, we would definitely take parts for the heater. Yeah because that's what we struggled with. Yeah, so basically if you're ever going to the Arctic Circle, take lots of parts. If you've got two, take 10, because <laughs> they will break, um, but you will have an amazing time. I mean, yeah. Norway and Sweden were just were beautiful, were weren't they? Yeah, but I, I think, I'm glad we, we saw it, um, but I'm, I'm glad we won't be going again. <laughs> Maybe in the summer, I'd love to go back Yeah, I think summer. we might go in the summer. But like in terms of being prepared, we were pretty prepared. You put heat pads on all the tanks and, but the one thing that we weren't prepared about was the things that, that went wrong. <laughs> and things in vans, by the way, always go wrong. So you yeah. will always have to fix stuff. Yeah. Hope you've liked the tour. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to follow our journey of wherever we're going to next, then by all means, follow us on our channel, James and Dawn. Not too crazy or innovative. And also on Instagram as well. Same thing, James and Dawn. You may have noticed that you can buy our ebook. Our ebook shows you how to build a van conversion. It has 190 pages of text, diagram, and images showing you various options or various systems. It also comes with 25 videos that show you hands on how to do many parts of building a van. Also, we have a course. The course is really in depth. It shows you everything from how to use basic tools all the way through to doing your gas, your water, and your electric installation. Not only that, but within the course, we support you hands on in making your electrical specification. And you get to join a community of like-minded van builders who are building their vans at exactly the same time. Follow the links to find out more and thanks for watching.